Okay, homework five, five, slide 15. The force required to stretch a hook's law spring varies from 0 newtons to 76.3 newtons as we stretch the spring by moving one end 15.9 centimeters from its unstretched position. Find the force constant of the spring. Uh, for this, to get the spring's constant or the force constant, you need an equation that's actually on the other side of the paper of your equation sheet, you'll see something that says simple harmonic motion. And then they give you this equation, F is equal to MA is equal to negative KX. So it's, it gives you this equation. The force of the spring as a function of the displacement is equal to negative K times X. All this shows this negative sign is the negative is because springs offer force in the opposite direction to their displacement. By that I mean when you compress a spring, like let's say you have a normal spring, you know, a series of loops, if you press in on the spring, like you make the spring really dense, the spring is going to want to force its way out. Likewise, if you stretch the spring out really, really far, like you've pulled out, the spring tries to force its way back in. So this negative sign just means like this, the spring offers a restorative force to try to bring itself back to its normal unstretched or uncompressed uh, position. So when you solve for the spring constant, the K, you can just kind of ignore the negative sign for here for now. Um, we'll plug in the, the maximum applied force on the spring, which is going to be 76.3 for this example. X will be the displacement. We need to convert the displacement of the string spring, excuse me, from centimeters to meters. And then K is the spring constant. K is the spring constant constant okay so force divided by displacement is that constant what we're looking for i'll plug in for the force 76.3 divide by 15.9 if it's in units of centimeters you will convert by doing e negative 2 that'll get you into meters so this is a newton on top and a meter on the bottom so when you divide these out you get a value for the spring constant K is equal to, type this in, 479.874 newtons per meter. So that's how you calculate your spring constant. And then find the work done in stretching the spring, answering units of joules. So this equation is given... Um, it is U spring, the potential energy of the spring is equal to one-half kx squared. The potential energy is the work. The potential energy stored in the spring is, is going to equal the work that you do. So by calculating this, this is the work done. One-half times this k value, which you calculate in part one, 479.874 times how far you stretch it, 15 e negative 2, and you square that. So this is the k, the x. You do this calculation, and you will have your answer in units of joules. Okay. On to slide 16. 16, a cheerleader lifts his 22.3 kilogram partner straight up off the ground, a distance of 0 0.579 meters before releasing her. Assume the partner's velocity is zero at the beginning and the end of the lift. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If he does this 31 times, how much work has he done? He does work against the force of, sorry, he does work against gravity. So the work he does gives the cheerleader potential energy gives his cheerleader partner potential energy so the work he does will be the cheerleader's mass times gravitational acceleration times the height times the total number of times he does this n where n is the number of times he lifts her 
So this will be 22.3 kilograms times 9.8 times a height of 0 0.579. And he does this 31 times. This gives you, this is how you'll get your answer, MGH times the number of times. Okay, thanks for watching. And then next video will be question number 17.